everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Brick Fair Virginia 2022, and today I'm joined by several builders who have worked on this massive LEGO Pirates collaborative layout here at Brick Fair. So I've got the first builder with me here. If you want to introduce yourself and kind of give an overview of what this is. Hi, uh, this is Kat. I worked with some of my LUG members, we're all members of Charm City LUG, to create this uh, nice pirate cove here. We have been calling it Charm City Cove. and. The mastermind behind this was Jason, and you'll get a chance to talk to him in a bit. Basically, he worked and just designed this nice grid and a map, and he oversaw it and tried to keep us all in check. And we worked together for probably the last two to three years on it periodically, going, hanging out, you know, building, landscaping, all that fun stuff. And then, of course, there was a big 11th hour push this week to finish it up. So. Because, of course, like planning and working ahead is a struggle for LEGO fans. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, people ask when it's going to be done, and I say it's going to be done when the doors open to the public. <laughs> Wherever we're at at that point is the finished product. So we'll launch on in with this section here. So I think you kind of worked on this city. What, what's happening here? Yeah, so um, I made this lighthouse uh, that matches the fort that we've got and then a city gate here. We obviously want a little bit of the same aesthetic. Nice little river, some, some soldiers going on about their day. Now, we like to have all the little fun scenes that you would see in a Lego set. We've got a little banana in a tree hanging there. Kids love seeing that. It's a very popular, one of the, one of the best CMFs. People know it. They love it. Um, and then we've got a little wild cat who's chasing a monkey who's taunting him with a banana. And, of course, my favorite mock is a rebuilt version of my childhood castle, which, if you notice, is brick-built version of the wall panels that people might remember. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, you've got these old themes, you've got fans, and, and they want to see themes that they're familiar with, but with a little bit of a twist. So we've got the ruin in the woods, a lot of things happening. We've got a great market, uh, a nice little UN of flags. I I decided that, you know, they might fight and get into it on in the water, but on land, everybody really gets along. So I tried to put figs from, from kind of different eras of both castle, pirates, islanders, and all of that. They can come, pick spices, get their whatever flag pertains to them, fish, and then obviously what would a pirate cove be if when you lost a hand you weren't able to grab a hook from somewhere and a parrot, and then everyone could just drink together here, hang out, enjoy some food at the bar, get along, park their canoes or whatever across, and go from there. So I built most of the buildings in here, uh, the small one on the end I didn't do, and this church I didn't do, but we try to keep it random. It's not anchored in a specific time or place. It just feels like something you would imagine as, as a child. Not It's not Nassau, it's not San Juan, it's not any specific pirate town or from a, a you know media franchise, so. I mean, the, the whole thing looks spectacular and I like a lot of these buildings here, so point out maybe some of the, the details on some of these that you worked on. So. I build, obviously, sporadically, randomly, and all over the place. Um, I built that actual yellow one on, I believe it was for LEGOCon 2021. I did a little stop motion of kind of how I lay out different possibilities for architectural details and things. Uh, I wanted a lot of bright colors. Obviously, it's easy to kind of do a pirate town in all browns and things like that, but my thought is when these, when these places are first built, they're new, they're shiny, they're great, you know, they're not all ruins and things. Again, I try to keep it a little bit international, not anchored in a time, and of course I also base my builds on what is available on the pick brick wall. So that coral building ended up being the one by four tiles with the studs on either side, and I just had to kind of do some snot building to make it work as a building. I tried to keep it a little bit modular so that as, as I'm placing it, because obviously I didn't build half of this until this week, and I never put it out. So I didn't really know where anything was going to go before I got here. So I try not to build things that are connected necessarily. So for example, this building here will come up and the little bar area is not part of it. And it's the same with the teal building. The little uh, add-on there is not part of it. So if I need to switch it to a different side, I can make that decision in the moment when I get here. You've got the old king going through a carriage. We've got a nice little board of, of possible commissions that pirates could take. And obviously swords, food, all the essentials that you could need. Now, I also want to give a shout out. You've got the parrot obviously represented here, which looks fantastic, very on brand. You also have your nails uh, color coordinated yes, with the buildings there. I should have switched the building's location. So I did pick colors that are specific to my two favorite buildings because details matter. Uh, th this is key. Yes. Um, yes. And then this is cherry. 
So a nice, a nice young man named Everett came by and he gave me about 30 minutes of notes on how we could improve this. Uh, it was very helpful, so thank you, Everett. Very much appreciated. And he decided that Polly was maybe not the best name for my parrot uh, because he's red, so he should be called Cherry. So uh, this is Cherry, nice to meet you, everybody. <laughs> well, fantastic work then. So I think that takes us on to the next builder. Hey, Joshua. Hey, hey Beyond the Brick, how is everyone? Yes, yeah, so my name is Joe Zawada. Um, I'm one of the contributors uh, for the uh, Charm City Cove. Uh, my contribution was the port in the middle. Um, you know, I, all of us helped with the landscaping across the whole thing, but that was kind of my, uh, my primary contribution. Um, when we were doing the initial planning, there was some uh, different ideas that were tossed around. Uh, so I, unfortunately I got a, a bit of a late start, uh, but about last summer we were able to you know, finalize what I was gonna be doing. Um, and yeah, I started out with uh, looking for some inspiration photos. Uh, I looked up stuff from, uh, let's see, Pirates of the Caribbean, so you have like Port Royal, uh, video games such as Assassin's Creed, uh, and then as well as, I'm, I haven't watched the show, but I think it's called like Black Sails, Black Flags, something like that. Uh, so, you know, uh, content that is relevant to the period. Uh, it's not a period that I am particularly familiar with, so I relied more on source material uh, rather than my own uh, just remembered references. Uh, but yeah, so I I felt that, you know, with all the ships, they needed some place to, you know, come into port and offload their wares and, you know, import and export, you know, the that's, you know, how a lot of these uh, islands operated uh, to, you know, bring, shipping centers. Yeah, shipping centers, you know, to, you know, integrate themselves into, you know, the world and economies of scale. Yeah, so, um, you know, you have, all sorts of, you have a fish market. Um, I always try to incorporate, you know, some fun and levity. So instead, you know, your standard little silver mini fig fish, I decided to use the uh, the Mario, like collectible mini fig fish. So you have like a cheap cheap and a that purple thing. Yeah, you have all sorts of good stuff. Um, one of the, the- uh, Real quick, I really like the roof on that building as well. Thank you, yeah, they're, they're the, the Wolverine claws in dark tan. Yeah, I got those a few years back. Uh, they were for some build years ago that got scrapped, and I was like, "Oh, hey, I need some. I need a thatched roof. Might as well pull these out. I have like ten thousand. I did not use all ten thousand. I still have plenty more to use at some point. They'll get to it eventually. Uh, yeah, but it, it was it was a great time to build. You know, one of the my build is unfortunately in the dead center, which means that um, if anything falls, it stays there. Uh, so, you know, we do have lots of, you know, animals and mini figs that have, you know, fallen to, you know, things such as scurvy, malnutrition, dysentery, you know, the whole lot, unfortunately. But, you know. It's a, it was a tough time. Yeah, it was a tough time. You know, life expectancy is, we should be grateful, you know, for modern medicine. You know, these, you know, pirate folk, they, they didn't have the luxuries of, you know, I don't know, Claritin Clear. I also really like the building on the end there and kind of the, the tiling to create the, the outside walls. Thank you, thank you. So when I, most of my references were uh, more like British. I, if I'm wrong, no one in the comments correct me, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just putting that on the record. You'll be talking to yourself. Um, most of my stuff that I rely on and build and more familiar with is like Tudor and more like British, you know, style of architecture. Uh, but as things were kind of coming together, we started incorporating more French influences. And so what I kind of started doing was I was finding lots of French colonies used, uh, you know, painted wood siding, uh, like horizontal siding, and they were using colors like blues and grays rather than your browns and your tans that you would see in uh, British architecture. So yeah, that's kind of how uh, it came together. So there's like multiple cultural influences. To tie it together, I added some flourishes on, you know, all the buildings to kind of make them more cohesive as a group to make this like general Western Central European uh, influenced uh, port. Yeah. And there, I like I like the ship just off off the dock right there as well. I think that is it coming to unload some cargo. Yeah, up and uh, they, you know, you have to have Goombas. I think they're called a Goomba. They're offloading Goombas to the uh, to the continent, to the new some world. Foreign visitors. Yeah, yeah, some Koopas, some Goombas, all sorts of goodies. That's where they got the cheap cheeps. Mm -hmm. It's canon. Right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you for for creating that through line for me. They they're bringing the 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 weird Mario fish. There we go. Well, great work. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
So we'll keep moving down here. We got a, a little bit more like a landscaping area. It looks like we've got a couple of guys uh, roaming around here heavily armed. I like that, of course. You can see some like village figures out there. But then as we move to the beach section here, we start to get to a much more fortified area. So we've got our next builder here. If you want to introduce yourself and what did you do? Yeah, I'm Jason Miller. And uh, so I built, this is my take on the old El Dorado Fortress, the old Lego uh, Fortress set. So it basically takes up uh, 12 of the large gray base plates and it's got over 200 soldiers inside the fortress. And unfortunately you can't see it because it's again in the very middle, but it's actually fully detailed. If you can see through the windows and everything, you see the governor is having dinner and, his, and that's his bed chamber in there also. It goes into officer quarters after that. It goes, there's a grand staircase. There's barracks on the first floor. There's a kitchen, there's a dungeon. There's the warehouse that has lots of warehouse goods that no one can see. So because we can't get the lid off because it's over there under the crane and it's in the middle. You but, guys went too expansive with it. <laughs> yeah, well, so I started out building this in my basement and then it was like so massive, like, well, we get it, we need to go bigger. And then we're like, well, it kind of needs to go bigger. And then, well, let's kind of square it off. And so then it went bigger. And so, you know, 150 of these great base plates later, here it is. So um, down in the like the little cove where the, the pirates are, you know, making their getaway and everything, headed back over to Cat's little cove island here, there's actually a little pier inside there, and there's a secret staircase that goes all the way up into to the base of the jail and everything. So they're escaping, so that's the idea there. Um, one of the other things is that we did, or that I did on this, is like the flowers, the vines. So those are the old, um, from the old Octans gas stations, just the fire, uh, or the, uh, like the nozzle piece for the green, for the, uh, what is it called? The uh, the gas lines. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and the flowers are all on there just being held on by friction. That's it. So they're not tied on, nothing like that. So you could like pull it right off, but they're actually on there really, really good. But I love the flowering vines, all the foliage. We went crazy with that. We stayed up like lots of nights making trees and, and it takes a long time to do all that. And so Kat and I were just making flower, flowering vines like crazy. I love the the way you incorporated like the walls of the fortress into the rock work there and how, and how seamless that is. It really gives this idea that it was kind of built into the rock. Yep. So if you actually go back and look at the old El Dorado fortress, you're going to see like that, that big pre-molded base plate that has it. But that's kind of how Lego did it back in the day of the of the walls coming right out of that old molded rock work and everything that they did. And we come to the first of several very impressive uh, ships here now as well. So. What can you tell us about the ships we have throughout here? So this is um, a take on the Silent Mary. This was actually a, a Lego set, but if you remember, there was the hull was unfinished and everything, and it was about half this size. So of course we had to make it bigger because bigger's better, right? So yeah, and then uh, and then of course it's so big that the sails that came with it were all tattered and everything. So I had all these Technic panels, and I'm like, well, I'll just try this out, and so. I ended up using flex tube to hold it together because they're so heavy, but it works pretty good. And it kind of reminds me of the old sea cow from the Lego movie. They use Technic cells in that. We also have a ton of these uh, water plates here. So how many? How many are there total in the layout? So, so as far as like water plates themselves, there's uh, about 125 water plates. There's like well over 100,000 trans tiles to make up the water. So. Uh, yeah, my thumbs were sore a lot, like putting all the water down. And then as we come around to this side of the fort, you see kind of like a cargo crane there and all the soldiers lined up, all bristling with cannons on the yep. side. Yeah, so there's actually, so there's three decks on this side and actually down into the, down into the rock work is where the dungeons are. And then there's the gun deck and then there's the second floor, which is kind of like barracks and just like living quarters. And then there's another gun deck above that. And then of course the top. Uh, the front side up here is the warehouse side. Right below there is the medical, like, you know, the first aid. So whenever Joseph infects everyone with plague and everything, they have to come here to get better. And you've got another impressive ship docked there. It looks like troops unloading. Yep. So this is the garrison for the fortress. So we actually, I actually have about 3,000 redcoats. Uh, in this display, we only have about 350 total. But, yeah, like, basically they're coming over. 
and Cat is French, but these are English, so we're taking over the French settlement of Nassau. So, so yeah, these are all three basically British frigates and just offloading troops. But now we've got this bad guy coming in, so we're dispatching one of the ships to come over and try to help intercept it. So that's the story. Fantastic work. We'll, we'll check out a little bit of a different section here now then as well. Perfect. So what do you have for us here? Hi. Uh, so this is my Islanders Cove. Uh, when our group decided we were going to do this collab, uh, Jason came to me and was like, hey, we're doing pirates. And I'm a good uh, 90s kid. And so uh, as a kid, I could never afford the like actual big pirate ships because those were like, you know, like the flagship sets for the theme. Uh, but I could afford the Islanders sets, uh, which were always like the, at, I got at that time, they were like maybe 15 bucks, right? It was the little tiny, like one Islander, one pirate or whatever. Exactly, yeah. And so I was like, well, this is the perfect sub theme to make part of this uh, and be a little nostalgic to uh, people here at the show who are my age. <laughs> uh, and it just started uh, with the mask that is right there in the front, that big red tiki mask. I was fooling around in studio. Uh, I had the the tiki mask from the old sets, uh, and I was like, hey, I wonder if I can make this as a brick-built thing, right? Um, and how cool would it be if it's then integrated into the mountain? And um, it was, just kind of went organically from there. Uh, you'll see behind the mask, uh, there's a very familiar element of the skull behind it, uh, which is actually just from like a Ninjago set uh, that they had. Uh, and I, I got that set from a friend, and I was like, this is actually really, really cool. And it's the perfect size to be a creepier behind the scenes of the Tiki mask. Uh, looking through it, I kind of focus on practicing landscaping, um, which is something that uh, I've always been a, a modular city builder. And so this felt like a really good opportunity to work on organic shapes uh, and landscaping. And I wanted to create as much with the storytelling as I could. So the the pathway goes completely through the mountain and so there's like on this side uh like a pit that has skeletons and stuff below where kind of you could do your sacrifices um and there's a, a steps going up that mountain so that the minifigs can actually get from one side to the other um the fun little thing uh, in addition to that is the very back of the mountain has a guy hanging off of it uh and i Gosh, it was like 2019, we had like a gift with purchase that was one of the brick built larger Lego bricks, like a two by four. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, hey, that's really cool. How funny would it be if the Islanders were like, rather than like an Easter Island head, they were building giant Lego bricks. Uh, and so he's like carving it out of the side of the mountain. The hut on the other side of it uh, has someone, another guy finishing up the sculpture, right? Um, but yeah, it was just a, a lot of fun. Uh, collecting all of the old Islander minifigs that are very hard to find now um, and looking for ways to build a set that has play features and little hidden items like a treasure chest hidden under the tiki mask and things like that. So One of my favorite elements from those sets was always the printed canoe and I know you've got one on like the back corner there as well. I, yeah, absolutely. I ordered a lot of canoes in hopes to find the best quality ones so I have like Gosh, I had an order of like 20 of them and then was like, let's see which one actually comes in as said, used, but like new, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so in your mind, do the uh, Islanders interact with the, the mainlanders over there or how does that work? They do. Yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, so as we were coming up with the narrative of the, the overarching uh, display, uh, we knew that it was like pirates versus like the colonialism because we, we wanted like a true to history part. And I looked and I was like, well, the Islanders are there, but they're the neutral party in this one. We don't have to have like colonialism that actually is like offensive in any way, but they can be the cool guys over here doing their thing. Uh, and there's a, a, an Islander who has beached his canoe over on the mainland uh, and is walking to the bar to join his friends. So a little bit of interaction, but nothing too crazy. They're not the main threats here. Well, thank you. Great work. Appreciate okay, thank it. You. We'll keep moving down the line here. We've got another really fantastic island here. So if you want to introduce yourself and what is this? All right. Hi, my name is Slade Vantine and this is Shark Island. And I actually just wanted to make an island and it didn't work right. And it was just sand and it didn't look good. So then I started adding rocks and then I was playing around with the small 
um, underwater, half underwater sharks. And then I said, you know what, I need to make the whole island. And it just expanded from there. And then uh, my son said, hey, it needs a little more oomph. So we put the old sunken ship in to give it that effect. And, and then I love the nature scene. So we just filled it up as much as we could with vegetation and uh, tried to make it yeah. stand out and, and be unique and, and still fit in with the whole overall plan of of Jason's huge pirate theme. I love the idea for like an animal shaped island like this. Talk about kind of the, the rock work and getting that body shaping down using all those pieces. Yeah, that, that took a while of work. Um, it's definitely snot and laid on the side and staggered and lots of technique pieces inside to hold each one at its elevation. So I actually laid out the uh, dark tan tile first and then uh, built up to it. So I kind of worked from the water up um, for the build. So it worked out well. I also love the variations in color on the water tiles around here and it creates so much depth to the build. It, it, it definitely does and, and adding the tan for the sunken ship really helped. And, and gives it a lot of pop, which I, I love. <laughs> yeah. Well, excellent work, thank you. So as we move down, you can see another fantastic view of the fortress there as well with the, the ramp uh, going up there, very reminiscent of the original kind of El Dorado fortress that that is based on. Kind of see into the, the courtyard a little bit there and all of the soldiers getting ready to protect themselves against any potential threats as well. But we've got another fantastic island that we'll move over here and show now. So another builder, if you want to introduce yourself and what do you have? All right, uh, my name is Kevin Dark. Uh, I'll be honest, I am not as good at scenery building as my fellow builders. So with my island, I wanted to go with more of uh, telling stories with minifix. So what I have here is a rocky island, which I call Rock Island because names are hard. Uh, you have a bunch of pirates that have snuck onto the island here and they're planning a surprise attack on the passing colonial ship. So there's a bunch of cannons spread throughout the island. Uh, up at the top there, you have the pirate captain who's uh, looking through her spyglass and, and yelling, it's time to attack. And her trusted monkey there is uh, blowing on the bugle, letting everyone know. And at the side there, there's pirates uh, running in with just any weapons they can get, so brooms and pots and pans. Uh, down here underneath the rock, you can see the little uh, pirate treasure cove with a couple pirates that have just have decided to avoid the battle and they've snuck off and uh, are being haunted as a result. Uh, and over here, uh, this is a woman that didn't know there was a battle going on. She's just over there just fishing for some clams. And uh, also when I finished this, I had a lot of leftover minifigs. So I just started putting them on other people's areas. So if you come uh, like over here, we have uh, a couple, uh, couple soldiers that have been sent out to recover a lost anchor, which is uh, slightly more than a two person job. And over here, there are some soldiers in training. You can tell that because they have their uh, blue training uniforms. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have a lot of like little vignettes that I have going on here. There's a pirate that's being captured. Uh, I tried to tell a story that the uh, soldiers are generally hungry. So there's one uh, trying to catch a bunny. There's one over there trying to catch a clam with a spear. They're uh, stealing some cabbage over there. And uh, you know, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. This whole build, most people look at it and go, oh, this is about pirates, or oh, this is about uh, uh, the fortress and uh, colonial soldiers, stuff like that. It's really, it's about one thing, and that's the banana in the tree. Yes. The banana in the tree, this is what the whole build's about. <laughs> Everything else, it's just filler, because the one tree didn't seem like enough, so we just kept build building out to really kind of kind of make it a full build. Context is key. Exactly. You need the context because if it's just a, a banana in a tree, you're like, well, where is the tree? Is it in the Caribbean? What time is it? What, what, where does it take place? So this really gives it context of the banana in the tree. Yes, I love it. Well, great work there. I love the, the ambush idea with all of the, the pirates over there on the Rock Island. So I'm sure that'll be a spectacular battle about to take place there. Uh, hopefully, yeah. I mean, they're not very well armed. A lot of the cannons aren't quite facing the right direction, but <laughs> I'm sure they'll have fun with it. Yes. Thank you so much. Good work there. Thank you. And uh, Joe, I wanted to bring you back in. I know you worked on uh, a lot of the landscaping here. I, I watched you during some of the setup days, kind of putting trees down and stuff. So talk about kind of like your approach to landscaping and how that works with some of the layout like this. Well, a great start when doing landscaping is you find someone else to pay for it. That's my big tip. So uh, you spoke with him earlier, the guy who built the, Jason who yeah. built the fort, um, 
he has the of the members. He had the largest collection of just brick and space available. Uh, so we had a general idea of how the island was going to be laid out, and then uh, without any monetary investment on my part, I got to raid my friend's Lego room and uh, Cat as well, and we utilized the pieces that he had. He has a fabulous collection, a fabulous Lego room, and uh, we started out, you know, with the trying to form a gradient, knowing where, okay, these are going to be the high points, the low points. We have the the trodden earth where there's going to be high traffic. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where we started is kind of a, a, a mental map and then a physical map of kind of where we wanted buildings and where we expected, you know, elements to, to take place. Uh, and once you have that in line, you can start mapping out, you know, little scenes and where, where things would make for, you know, good interest points, because, you know, as a big display, you want areas to for people to look at all over the place. You don't just want all the interest at one spot. Individual stories kind of sprinkled throughout. Exactly. So once you have the stories and the general idea, then you can start formulating a plan for the landscaping. So I think we, we started in the the corner at, near the town uh, for the main island, starting with, you know, the, the creek that you're now seeing. That's where... Uh, we got started, uh, you know, planning with the the water going into the main uh, cove, and then the pathway going into the town. And then once we got through here, the elevation that we established on this side kind of formed the rest as we moved uh, along the way through the rest of the town. Yeah, I also love the the different tree variations you guys have here as well. Thank you. Yeah, our uh, our buddy Jason, he is great at he's like the social media savvy one of all of us, and he takes a lot of time researching, you know, great techniques that we can utilize on all of our displays. Uh, yeah, he, he, he put a lot of thought into this and was able to, you know, give us a kind of a, a general consensus of kind of, this is what our vegetation is gonna look like, palm tree type A, B, and C. Uh, yeah, to make, you know, a beautiful cohesive display where the vegetation, you know, makes sense. Fantastic work. So what was the final count on how many people were involved in the layout? So there were uh, six people who had mapped out established areas. And then we had, you know, I think like two or three more people who had, you know, standalone buildings. And then um, while we were on site, while we were spending days working on it, we had a few more people who, you know, friends of ours who wanted to get a mock in, wanted to get, you know, a little scene in. So, you know, you might have seen it. There's people building sand castles that we can credit our friend Bailey. Uh, there's a Bionicle Island, uh, a buddy of ours, Will, makes Bionicle mocks and he's like, hey, I have a palm tree island, can I throw it in? So at the end of it, we probably had maybe a total of 10 bodies who worked on it, uh, a lot of people helping us at the show, but the core group was six and then a phenomenal group of folks afterward who uh, really helped it come together at the end on site. It's a whole spectacular layout, so thanks to you and everyone who put in all the work and effort to not only build, but also get this massive layout set up at the show here. It looks spectacular, so thank you and can't wait to see what you all do in the future. Yeah, thank you so much.